navigating the admissions workspace, uh, we've tried to set it up so that you have as much of the information you need to do your job all in one space here. So in the, what you might call the upper left corner over here, uh, you have the lead pane. The tabs above here indicate uh, different uh, various stages and statuses or um, various rules that place them in these different tabs uh, that will define what you see in these lists. So, of course, new leads are people in a new lead stage. Apply now, new lead um, is someone who's filled out the online application form and become a, uh, a hot prospect through that. So, as you um, navigate through these panes, you whatever you click in this uh, upper left pane will drive what you see in the other panes around it. Uh, again, in all panes, you have the search function to, to search for one of your leads. You can uh, click the new button, then enter some information in here, and click run or hit enter and it will pull up your pull up your information. Uh, this is a very powerful search function we have available here, much more powerful than previous. So the lead the object you'll want to choose is going to be lead. Uh, generally in these in most cases, uh, certainly in this case, and then you can select the field. Most of the fields you're going to be looking for are going to be under properties. So if you go to properties, you can see several fields. Um, notice all the address fields start with address, so you have even mobile numbers in there. Uh, uh, contact properties, date of birth, so those are derived from the contact. Uh, lead information, program information, items like that. So if, say, we select that, and enter just the last four of a mobile number and then we get our lead who can, has those digits in his mobile number. Uh, you can of course save your filters and give them name mobile equals 5174 <laughs> not something we would probably want to save in this case pretty specific but uh, the idea is you can save your filters and then they would show up in these um, in these drop downs here and then you can uh, easily run them just by clicking on them like that. Uh, so again as you select your leads over here they drive what you see in these other panes. So moving around clockwise we're going to come over here. Uh, here you have the original leads. In the case uh, where a single person has two requests for different programs, uh, they'll show, they may show up here with multiple leads. Uh, duplicate leads won't show up in here. You can find those in another area if you like, but um, duplicate leads uh, won't show up, won't be listed in here. So you should only see leads that are um, true leads for a program. Now, when you uh, have your lead selected, a uh, helpful tab over here is the lead info tab. When you click on that, you see uh, the preferred, what are called the preferred properties, which are the same properties that are at the top of the lead form when you enter a lead form. So if you, when you make changes to these, to these properties, it's, uh, it's quite handy because you can just click out of it and then save out of here. So, Making changes to um, these those basic properties are very easy right here, especially so if you have a new lead here where you haven't received their information, uh, their program and version start date information, and you've never contacted them, then you could easily just pull them up over here, have them on the phone, and enter their information over here, keeping in mind you want to enter in the program first, then the program version, and the program version start date last. So then, moving down to uh, the lower right pane, you have interactions. These would be interactions that are um, similar to activities in CampusView. So when you work with an interaction, 
it's going to be of a phone type or a meeting or um, we'll be using VoIP as, as internal notes. Um, all those will be covered in the interactions video, which can be viewed separately. Uh, but down here in the interactions, you can see all the different interactions for that particular lead. And on any of these fields where you see a, uh, a list item like this, the quickest way to see the most recent is just make sure your interaction ID column is sorted with the upside down triangle. All of these columns be, can be sorted. So you can sort on any column that you see in any of these lists. And then clicking on it will sort it either ascending or descending. So over here you can sort by lead name. Keeping in, right, in mind it's going to sort by first name. And then, you know, of course you can do, do descending like that as well. And the most recent here at the top in this case. Another thing about these, um, these what we call grid or table views, uh, you can right click on any of the columns and do a select column. So you can add various columns and you can see all the properties that are available to the interaction here. Um, it's best not to try and drop this down and choose other properties, just leave it at the default of whatever it comes in based on the pain that you're working that you're trying to add a column to and so if you want a follow-up date for instance might be a good column to have in there and then you can see I have a follow-up date on this interaction moving around moving along you can get down here this is the contact information for whatever lead of course you have selected up in the upper left column pane here. Now the contact information uh, again contains um, items that roll up to the contact level. That does include items such as document status which is our um, campus view sys documents, activities which are campus view sys activities, um, and then, of course, all of the various CRM items that you have that you're used to seeing, properties, interactions. So the interactions would just be a reiteration of this pane, so it's not really necessary. Um, mailers, anything they're in, set to get in print. Um, count information might be any high school that they're attached to, items like that. Of course, you know, then you see your various scores and um, items like that. CRM docs are where um, we'll store documents before they are promoted to the Campus View Sys application. As an, as an application, that is to say. So then uh, from this general workspace, of course, you can jump to your Interactions workspace. Interactions workspace are inter interactions that are assigned to you. So here are all of your interactions. And of course, again, you can sort to see the most recent on the top. And then we have, <clears throat> uh, of course, the oldest ones on the bottom. And you can click through, you can double click in an in interaction, or single click on the uh, ID field and take a look at what it says. So this is the outgoing message. Now, Naturally, for more detail, uh, watch the interactions video, and we'll be talking about interactions at that point. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind is that, just as in most Windows applications, where you see these dividers, you can move them around, make the works, you know, the different panes larger or smaller if you like. If you want to see a little bit more detail down here, if you want to see your search pane uh, larger, you can make it larger too. Also, remember that if anything ever looks strange about your workspace first thing you should check is the view menu if any of these are unchecked between you know in this middle section here then click them and it should restore your workspace back to normal with of course the caveat that the search pane if you don't see your search pane it's at the top under the view menu so you go to view search pane and then there you go back to normal. 
That's your workspace. Enjoy it.